Hello everyone, and welcome to the High Tech Kitty series on how to create Minecraft Dungeons and Dragons abilities. The next few episodes we'll be creating the Minecraft Fireball. Let's first see what it looks like. Hold down right click, the magic circle gets drawn. Once the magic circle finishes drawing, it turns orange. We release the ability and a beautiful fireball flies forwards, creating an awesome explosion, cool smoke, and does lots of damage. And also, if you watch, when the fireball is released, the icon will turn gray, letting us know that it's on cooldown. And once it turns back to being orange again, now the ability can be used again. Very fun ability. So let's start making it. In the video description below, you'll see several different links to websites that I'll be using, as well as resources that you may need. Two of these resources are a blank resource pack, in this case, one called New D&D RP, and a blank data pack called Minecraft D&D. I suggest you download those and use those, that way you can follow along. Okay, so we're in a brand new world, and we have an empty data pack and an empty resource pack, and we want to create that awesome fireball. That cool looking icon that we had before was actually a carrot and a stick. Even though it didn't look like we were carrying one in our hand, that's a cool trick with resource packs that we'll get to later. So the first thing we want to be able to do is detect whenever we right click with a carrot and a stick. Luckily for us, Minecraft makes this very easy. Right slash scoreboard, objective, space add, and we're gonna call this objective carrot because that name just makes sense. And we're gonna type minecraft.used colon minecraft dot carrot and then we're going to choose carrot on a stick so now we've just made a new scoreboard called carrot that's of type minecraft dot used colon minecraft dot carrot on a stick what this will do is anyone who right clicks with a carrot on a stick in their hand will automatically get plus one to the score called carrot because they've just used a minecraft carrot on a stick let's make sure this actually works by typing slash scoreboard objectives set display and we'll choose sidebar and then our carrot score and so so far we can see carrot on the right but no one has any points in it if i right click i get one point if i spam right click i keep getting one point every time awesome so now we have a carrot and a stick scoreboard and we can detect right clicking with a carrot and a stick but next we want to be able to detect whenever we right click with a specific carrot and a stick and have some sort of action happen so first I'm going to give myself a command block and then I'm going to go to an awesome website, one of my favorites for Minecraft called MC Stacker. I've memorized a lot of commands, but some of the commands in Minecraft can get really tedious. And so I'm going to first go to slash give. Speaking of tedious, this has actually been updated just recently in 1.20.5. A lot of things changed. So luckily MC Stacker is fantastic. And I want to give myself a carrot and a stick. So I'm going to write carrot and then choose carrot and a stick. And I want the carrot and a stick to have a cool name. So I'm going to call it fireball. I can hide that. And I don't care about damage. I want it to be unbreakable. That's true. I'm going to want to have custom model data. And just to save some time, I'm going to put the number one in here for right now, even though that won't do anything yet. And then I like to hide all flags too. Really, all that means is that it won't tell me that it's unbreakable. I just want the fireball to just be an icon. And the last and most important thing for right now is to put custom data onto it. So we're going to call this fireball and then colon one. It's standard form to have a value and a key. And so I have fireball colon one. Don't worry about that. Just know you should have a name colon and then the number one or true. I prefer to put one. And there we go. So now we have this big, long, complicated command, but we didn't have to write it ourselves. So that's great. I'll just copy it. Go back to Minecraft. And I'm going to put it in a command block so I can get these whenever I want. Throw out my old carrot and a stick. Give myself a lovely button. And all right. So now I have a carrot and a stick called Fireball. It doesn't look special yet, but it is. Next, I want to detect when I right click with this carrot and a stick and I wanna have something specific happen. So here's where data packs come into play. We need to make sure that commands happen in a specific order. And we could use chain command blocks to do that. So this command happens and then this command happens. But instead, I'm gonna use data pack to make it easy. So let's go to our data pack and get started on that really fast. Go to saves, our new world. 
data packs, and this is where you would put your Minecraft D&D data pack. You go inside, go inside the data folder, and then I called mine D&D. You can feel free to change this name D&D to whatever you want. However, it needs to have no spaces and it should be short. And then we'll go into functions. There are two MC function files here already, and you can just copy and paste these to make more when you need them. There's core and handheld. Inside your world, you're gonna have one command block that's constantly running core, and that'll be the brain of our entire game. But for right now, I'm just gonna use handheld, which is where I'm gonna take care of all of the handheld items or different uh, interactions. I'm gonna open that up. Here I am inside the handheld MC function file. Uh, I love this program called Sublime Text, by the way. There's a link for it in the description of the video. But you can open this with Notepad or anything else too, it's fine. I just like the way Sublime Text works. And so we want to first go to the very bottom because at the very bottom of our handheld function, we're going to have an area that I'm going to call bottom of code. And you can see I'm using these pound symbols or hashtags, whatever you want to call them. These are comments. Whenever you have anything to the right of a hashtag or a pound sign, that's a comment. So it won't do anything. So I'm creating this nice little frame to frame the words bottom of code so that I know this will always be the very bottom of my code. At the very bottom of my code, I want things that should happen after everything else. And one of those things is going to be resetting caret back to zero. So I'm going to say execute as any player. And then as that player scores equals caret equals one dot dot. What this is saying is execute as any player has a score in caret of one dot dot, which means one or more. And then at, at s, meaning at the player who fills this condition. So in this case, my character, if I right click, I'm the one who's fulfilling the condition of having a score of one or more in caret. So it'll happen to me. I'm going to run the following command of scoreboard players set at s, meaning at me, caret zero. So I'm going to reset my score of caret back to zero whenever my score of caret is one or more. And I have this happening at the very bottom of my code so that my other stuff, like abilities, can all happen first. Uh, did I spell anything? Oh, I spelled something wrong. Scoreboard, file, save. Go back into Minecraft, slash reload. Inside this command block, I'm going to write function, dnd, &D, handheld. Put it on repeating, always active, and boom, there. Now, whenever I right click, you can see that my score for just 1 20th of a second becomes 1, and then immediately gets turned back to 0. It's 1 20th of a second because that handheld function is running once every tick and Minecraft has 20 ticks per second. So now I need a different command block and I like to use command blocks to write my commands initially to make sure I don't have any mistakes. Command will be read in the command block if it's wrong. And so we'll go back to MC Stacker and now we're gonna choose execute if entity. So I want to detect if an entity, in this case a player, is holding in their hand a carrot on a stick that has the same game data, fireball colon one, as the fireball that I just made, which has the game data, fireball colon one. So I'm gonna go to selected item, edit item, type carrot, carrot on a stick. The only part I want right here is the custom data, which is fireball colon one, and then copy that. And now I'm going to put it into the command block and add some more stuff to it. And so this says execute if entity. I actually want it to be execute as, so over and over again, not just once. And I don't want just closest player, I want all players. So execute as any player is holding in their hand, so selected item, a carrot on a stick, count one, doesn't matter, but components, and then custom data, fireball one. Some of this is new for 1.20.5, so I also wouldn't want to write it from scratch. But as you can see, MT Stackers saves us a lot of time. And then I want to add one more thing inside these square brackets. I'm going to put a comma. I'm going to say scores equals caret equals one dot dot. So now if I'm holding a caret and a stick that has the fireball one game data inside of it, and I have a score of one or more. That means that I'm holding the fireball carrot and a stick and I right clicked. So now I can detect that I'm holding the right carrot and a stick and I've just used it. And we'll say at, at s run, we'll say boom. 
I'm going to copy this command, go back to handheld. I'm going to put this up here. I'm going to start creating our fireball section now. Good code formatting is very important. So everything below here will be fireball. And this command will be used for initiating the summoning of the fireball. And so I'll put it right there. File, save. We can delete that now. That we need, we need though. Slash reload. Boom. Now, every time I right click, it says boom. And with a normal character stick, nothing happens. Boom, boom, boom. All right. We can now detect when we're right clicking with the correct fireball carrot and a stick. Now let's make this carrot and a stick fireball look a little cooler because right now it's kind of lame. Let's go to our resource pack. I'm going to go to dot Minecraft resource packs, new D and D RP inside the assets folder. You'll find a Minecraft folder inside there. You're going to find models and textures. The reason that it follows that file structure is because Minecraft itself follows that exact file structure. Resource packs simply overwrite any existing files that have the exact same folders and exact same names. And so we want to make it so a carrot and a stick with custom model data one will look different than a normal carrot and a stick. And so we're gonna first make the texture. So textures, item, and I created a carrot and a stick folder for you already. And inside here we have nothing. So we need a nice icon. And so I got this image called RPG icons. I found this fireball that looks pretty good. And so I opened this up in GIMP, but you can open it up in paint. That's totally fine. And I just turned it into a 64 by 64 square. So I've just copied over what will be custom model data one and custom model data two. We're not gonna worry about cooldown for a while, but I just figured I'd grab both right now. Next, we're gonna go to models. This is where it gets interesting. So inside the item folder, inside of normal Minecraft version, there'll be a JSON file right here called carrot on a stick. So I'm gonna go over here, assets, models, item, and here's what it looks like, carrot on a stick. So I'm gonna copy this and bring it over to here and open it up and look at it. This is what the normal carrot on a stick looks like. It has a parent model, which is just the default handheld item. And it has a texture and it says where the texture is located. And the texture is in the textures folder and then item, and then it's called carrotonastick.png. So this is the default. We wanna make it so that we can add overrides. One of the possible overrides is custom model data numbers. And so if we use custom model data one, then instead of using this model for carrot and a stick, It'll look in our model folder for a folder called item and then a folder called carrot and a stick and then a JSON file in this case called one. I like to keep my textures and my models that are using custom model data all having the same number. That way I know which one's which and can keep track really easily. Now we need to go into our carrot and a stick folder and add that model. I'm going to copy and cheat a little bit, bring this over so I don't do it again and open it up this is what it would actually look like by default. The only thing that's different is the texture is saying it's an item carrot and a stick folder and the texture is called one.png. But I want this item to not be seen in our hand. And a great way to make it so the item isn't seen in our hand is to change the display characteristics. And so for third person view and first person view, I've set the scale to zero for all three numbers, X, Y, and Z which means that when I'm holding it in my hand, I won't see it in my hand, but in the UI, the scale is normal. So on my hotbar, you'll still see it as normal. If we have an object that is a carrot and a stick that has custom model data one, it will look in the model item carrot and a stick folder for a JSON file called one. And so here's models item carrot and a stick folder, JSON file called one, and that JSON file says, hey, when it's in third person or first person view, set the scale to zero, 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 so it's invisible. And the texture it'll use, well, instead of being item carrot and a stick, will be item, and then a folder called carrot and a stick, and then a texture called one.png. So if I follow back to textures, item, carrot and a stick folder, one.png. There we go. The shortcut for refreshing your resource pack is function F3T or just F3T depending on your computer. And so reload resource pack and there we go. Now we have our fireball. Boom, 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 boom. And let's put it in the middle. Get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. I look like I'm holding nothing, but if I right click, I can still use it. 
boom, 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 boom. So the last thing we want to do for this episode is actually make it so that when we right click, instead of saying boom, we actually shoot a fireball. It won't be the awesome looking fireball that we'll have at the very end of these episodes, but it will at least still be a fireball, making it so that we'll at least have a working spell. Let's go back into our functions folder. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna control C, control V on core, because core is empty. And we're gonna rename core to cast underscore fireball. Let's open up cast fireball. We're not gonna have any comments in this one because we're only gonna have five lines of code here. And the only purpose of this function will be to actually summon and fire a fireball. So the way it's gonna work is that we're going to create an area effect cloud, three blocks in front of us, whatever direction we're facing. And then we're going to summon a fireball. And then we're gonna modify the motion data of the fireball to give motion to the fireball. And Minecraft will do the math for us where it'll draw an invisible line from our character's location to the area effect cloud that we summoned first. And then it will shoot the fireball exactly along that nice straight line. First, we're going to execute as at s at at s run execute positioned 0, 0.0 space 0, 0, 0. This allows Minecraft to do the math perfectly. Then run summon area effect cloud. And we're going to use the up arrows with a three on the third arrow in order to summon the area effect cloud three blocks directly in the direction that we're facing. And then we also want to tag the area effect cloud. So inside curly brackets, tags, colon, square brackets, and then quotes, and we're gonna tag it direction. Next, we're gonna actually summon the fireball. And so we're gonna say execute as at s, at, at s, run, execute, positioned. And this time we're gonna set the position to three blocks in front of where we're facing and then run summon fireball tilde 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 but on the middle tilde we want to raise the fireball up a little bit by 1.5 blocks and we also want to tag the fireball with two tags and so inside curly brackets we're gonna write tags again colon square brackets inside the first set of quotes we're gonna tag it fireball and then inside the next set of quotes we're gonna tag it new so it's a new fireball Next, we'll have the really cool line that's gonna modify the data of the fireball to give the fireball motion, and that motion will be set in a straight line from where our character is standing to where we summon the area effect cloud. And so we're gonna say execute as at s at at s run data modify entity. And the entity we wanna modify is gonna be at e type equals fireball comma tag equals new so the new fireball and then because minecraft requires it we're going to say limit equals one and then we're going to say motion because that's the part that we want to modify of that particular fireball and we're going to set that motion from the entity at e type equals area effect cloud comma tag equals direction and once again limit equals one and we're gonna use its position as the reference for the direction of our motion. And the last things you wanna to do to make it so that we have no problems is we're gonna do execute as at E tag equals new. So we're gonna execute at all entities who have a tag that equals new. We say at at S, so at that entity, we're gonna run tag at S remove new. So we're gonna remove the new tag from all entities in the world that are tagged new, in this case, our fireball. That way, if we summon more fireballs, they won't try and change their position mid-flight. And the final thing we're gonna do is we're gonna kill that area effect cloud. So we're gonna kill at E, tag equals direction. I just realized I had a couple typos. I just fixed them really fast. We'll do file save, go back to Minecraft and do slash reload. And there we go. We now have our very first completed spell. Well, congratulations on finishing episode one. Episode two should be out fairly soon. And in episode two, we're gonna actually do the drawing of the magic circle and add in the mana, both visually and as a mana requirement for casting the spell. And if you wanna learn more, we have a camp this summer that's actually teaching this exact kind of stuff at hightechyeti.com. Thank you very much and have a great day.